MacArthur about him in the press conference on Monday. He said, you can talk to him. He's a really interesting guy. And he, he kind of was. Mm -hmm. um, but I thought it was really interesting, like, his whole journey from Saints organization now coming to Atlanta. And I was just kind of curious, like, from your perspective, like, how much did you know about him kind of as he came in a couple weeks ago? Well, you know, coaching special teams, you get the opportunity, Tori, to watch a lot of film and watch a lot of punters throughout the league and a lot of specialists throughout the league or even core players. Um, had the opportunity to, uh, to have a joint practice with the Saints a couple of years ago when I was with the Chargers. They came down twice, so that was like my first opportunity to get a chance to you know, speak with Thomas and meet with him while coaching special teams. And then last year we actually played against the Saints um, earlier in the season when I was with the Lions, and he was a punter for them as well. So coaching special teams, meeting him in pregame, whether it was in practice, just getting an opportunity to know different guys throughout the league and see how um, each individual – how they are and how they operate. So whether it was in practice or in games, and then it's a blessing to have him in the building currently as our punter, which is awesome. You talked about having him in the building, and I know I was talking to him yesterday just kind of about last year and the disappointment he felt last year, kind of having an eye problem that was like misdiagnosed and mm -hmm. how that affected him and having a down year because of it. And he even said, he's like, you know, my kids saw me get fired like two times over the course of the last few months. And he was like, that was, I always wanted to be a good example to them and to other people too. I mean, what does that kind of just say about him as a person and his journey to Atlanta, but also kind of just the realities of sometimes being a special teams player in this league? You know, it shows his resilience and it's a great opportunity for us as individuals to see the why, you know, why things happen, his journey, how it happened, and then seeing him bounce back from that and get an opportunity to come here and, and be a player for us, a critical player for us when it comes to being coaching on special teams. Um, you know, you know that was unfortunate that happens, but I believe you know you never put in situations that you can't handle. And he's a great example of that, being able to be adaptable. You know, obviously the sacrifices he's got to make. He's away from his family, whether he's playing with the Jets and now with the Falcons, and seeing him bounce back from that and being able to take advantage of the opportunities that are given currently. So it's a big testament to his personality, his character, and who he is as an individual. Were you guys aware of the eye issue and that, and that was why he struggled last year, I guess? Did y'all yeah. talk about that much? No, those conversations, you know, those internal conversations, those are between us, but you know, the, you get to understand, you go back and you watch the film and you can see the correlation when it comes to that, you know, other issues or whatever, not, not being fully 100% or playing, you know, you know, with the, you know, like I say, like, you know, a slight handicap per right. se, you know, playing with a slight handicap. And you can see, it's actually kind of amazing to see him still go out there and play at the NFL level and be able to punt and do some of the things that he was doing last year um, and dealing with that and even years prior. And then now being able to work with him now and see him, you know, turn the corner when it comes to that. So, so again, a big, big testament to his character, who he is as an individual and being resilient and being able to, you know, come back after having those situations. But he, he's been doing a great job. We appreciate him in the building and the players love working with them and he's been great in the meetings. He said he feels like he's got a lot of years left. He doesn't consider this as just, you know, kind of his last gasp. He wants to prove he's got another round of career left in him. Do you see that in the, in the guy that you see out there, a guy who is healthy enough to keep doing this for a while despite? Again, the you know, it comes back to that we have the players on the roster and each individual, I mean, that's what you want to you want to be about. That's not about you know. Sometimes people get fixated on proving people wrong rather than proving yourself right. And that's what he's right now doing. He get an opportunity to come back, prove that you know he still has that ability to punt at a high level in NFL and be able to flip the field and help our defense be in better field position. So you know, right now we're just in the present. You know, week by week, our main objective right now is putting together a great game plan, putting the right personnel on the field on special teams to go out there and help our offense and defense on special teams versus San Fran. And that's what the main objective right now is. But he's been doing a great job for us. Maybe it's easy to just naivete or whatever, but he was analyst as a rookie punt. You were basically a rookie punter last year, opposed to Mike Gaff and then multiple vets this year. For punters, what's the difference? Because like you know it between like younger guys and like defensive end or even sometimes I think it's experience, being able to 
you know, have those experiences and having those situational punts, situational um, different situations in the game, having a score versus being down and the team rushing you, uh, guys going double vice on you, teams going double vice and being able to punt the ball. There's different stresses that you, you go through and experiences. You know, more said, cold quit, they've been through everything. They've been through the whole ringer, playoff football, playing and, you know, whether well, it's preseason or playoffs, they've been through all that stuff. And then, you know, last year having a guy like Jack Fox that his first NFL punt was week one of the season and getting now you had to provide him and try to make um, adverse situations within practice, which is a little bit harder to do, but you try to do that with, with guys, whether you have a young punter or if you have a guy that hasn't had that much experience, has been in the league for a couple of years, you try to provide those guys with those opportunities so they could grow from those situations. Uh, no different than if we're at practice, we might work a backed up punt, you know, yeah, we didn't have a backed up punt yet this year, but we're going to practice that. So when we get in the game, not only the punter, but the punt team and the protection, they're aware of the situation. They, they've been in a situation before, rather than their first time doing it is actually in a game. So I think that's the biggest difference with those punters is being able to have those experiences and being in those, uh, being exposed to certain situations, certain punts, certain aspects of the game, indoor, outdoor, uh, you know, playing playoff football, playing, you know, fourth quarter, you got to punt five times in the fourth quarter with the lead and various pressures, different coordinators they're going against. So that's the whole element that, you know, a guy like Morissette has over, you know, a guy that's a first year player yeah. when it comes to that. I don't say, yeah, I don't say more say it frees me up, but it allows me to also to pick his brain as well, too, on how he's handled certain situations under different various teams, various coordinators, various um, stadiums, dealing with wind, dealing with field position. It allows me to pick his brain. So I think it actually opens up Pandora's box when it comes to that because now I could, I could dig deep and ask questions because I don't have all the answers and I never will have all the answers, but I'm gonna fight like hell to get all the answers for our players and for our team. So that's what it comes down to when it comes to that. So if anything, it gets me, um, gets me fired up because I know he's experienced a lot of things that I haven't experienced yet as a coach and he's been playing in the NFL longer than I've been coaching in the NFL. So the opportunity to pick his brain about various situations helps. And that's gonna only help for down the road, the next man whether it's a practice squad player like Don Maggio or a guy down the road that might help down the road for experience when it comes to certain situations or certain punts. Yeah, Coach, I um, just wanted to uh, check in with you on the punter. I guess he has a different spin on it. The Bengals kind of scrambled him, uh, lost a couple uh, last week, cost him 10 points. Have you seen that? And uh, are y'all trying to get ready for that? You know, Mitch, is, he's, a, he's an Aussie punter. You know, he has an end over end punt, he has a spiral punt. He's right-footed just like every other right-footed punter in the NFL. If you go back and you watch the film of the three muff punts this year, it comes back to basic fundamentals, catch mechanics as a returner. You could have a really good returner, but if you're not having urgency to go catch the ball, get your nose underneath the football, have a good base, keeping the ball high and in front of you and making sure that you secure the catch, you have an opportunity for that ball to go on the ground. And the number one job as a punt return unit is make sure that we have the ball on offense the next play. You saw last week, Cincinnati, those two muff punts. One, the first one led to three points. The second one led to seven points. And then a couple weeks prior, Jacksonville, Tavon Austin dropped one that led to three points. So we got to make sure that we're controlling and creating field position, but we got to make sure we have the football first and don't give them an extra possession. Two thirds of games in the NFL are one score games. So we can't allow them to have that extra possession so they can get that extra score or the opportunity to get extra score. It's all about we don't want to give them hand them field position, put our defense in bad field position. That's not fair to our defense and that's not fair to our team. But to answer your question, he's a right footed punter. He's been doing a great job getting, the ball, getting up and through the football. He's a directional punter guy. Um, he could switch it at the last second before the ball snapped. But it's our job to have urgency to the football as a returner, get our nose underneath the football and secure the catch. I mean, every punter, you know, every punter in the NFL, they have their own different, you know, style and their different punts. But at the end of the day, the ball is shaped a certain way. It's 100 yards on the football field. Sideline's about 52, 53 yards. I mean, there's 22 guys on the field. 
So when it comes to that, I don't say per se he has a different spin. It's all about us controlling what we can control. And it's, again, effort, attitude, and then lasting our technique. We see Avery, after he catches punts, kind of go through a couple of mental reps almost on the field. Is that a coaching point with you? Is that just a tick of his? Is that something that he brought here with him? That's just something that he does. And it goes back to just honing in and being brilliant at the basics. You know, goes back to getting his nose underneath the football. You can see he's moving around, having a square base. And you go back and you watch guys like Devin Hester at practice. He would do the same thing, making sure he's catching the ball square. You could go back to, let's talk about kickoff return. Kickoff return, by the time a returner catches the ball, is about 25 to 30 yards in front of him. So he could have a stagger stance, and he could probably catch it on the run if he wants to because he has time. The defenders are 25 yards away. Punt return is a whole different beast because – by the time you can't control how far the ball is going to be punted, and you can't control how close a defender is going to be. So as a punt returner, you never know where that defender is going to come from. So you want to catch it with a square base because you never know. You want to be in a triple threat position. Let's say, for example, we're running a right return. So we're running the ball to your left, my right. If I catch the ball in a stagger stance like this with my right foot up and I catch it like this, now i got to take a couple extra steps to get there. Well, if that defender is right here on me and I took those couple of steps, it's a bang, bang play, makes a tackle rather than I catch it and then I could go or catch it and make the first guy miss. So you want to be in that position to where you could catch it and you could get to where you need to get to. And you're trying to get to one, the return, and two, you're trying to make the first guy miss. So that's what it comes down to that. So you can see he's always trying to have a square base. In order for you to have a square base, you got to have urgency to go get underneath the football. We talk about like a center fielder in baseball. You can't just like – jog back, you got it, because by the time you go to catch it, if you're drifting this way and you catch the ball, and let's say you're about 15 yards away from me, by the time I get myself to this position, you already gained five to seven yards. You're already closer to me, because now I'm, I'm now in the position to get vertical. So that's things that we work on, and he's brought a lot of tools that he's worked on coming from Boise State, coming from various coaches he's worked under, and it's our job as coaches to enhance that and keep him uh, – detailed with it and making sure that we're continuing to have urgency with those details. Scott, we're going to go back to the part that we do see for a second. The fact that you worked with Aaron last year, does that give you any insight? Oh, yeah. Into, in, into kind of maybe some of what he's able to do? Yeah. And, you know, the, he, they, Aaron has a toolbox just like Mitch has a toolbox. And then there's a reason why they're in the NFL because of that toolbox that they have and their ability to hit spiral punts or hit end over end punts or show a punt to their right and then hook it back to their left. They have that op they have that ability to put the stress on the returner, which is awesome. It's a great chess match to go go against. And our job as like our return team as returners, we got to make sure we swing at the right pitches. If there's an opportunity, we have to just fair catch it and make sure we have the ball for the next play. Do it. If they outkick the coverage and we have room to work with, let's do it. If the ball's hitting the ground and takes one big bounce, and Avery could our returner could catch it and go, he could take it. If it's bouncing around and it's like, ooh, I don't know if I should return that one, then let's just stay away from it, Peter, Peter. So it, those, uh, that ability for the punter with those you know, different punters with those different styles like Mitch or Sipos, it, it provides a different dynamic to the game because they're able to have good ball placement, good control of the football when they're going directional punting or if they're backed up, if they want to hit a spiral punt. So not only are we just working catching a spiral punt, we got to work on catching various different types of punts, whether it's going to our left and to our right, or if it's down the middle, or if it's backed up and he wants to hit it end over end, whatever the case may be, we're providing our players with the tools to be successful so it's not their first time seeing it on Sunday. All right, thank you guys.